She is a rock and roll publicist who's turning the tables on ping pong, proving it's never too late to get into the game. At 73 years young, competitive table tennis player Carol Kleffner is certainly breaking all the rules. John After a successful so career as a publicist for legendary from acts like The Who, David Bowie, the and The Rolling Stones, Carol was no stranger to the good life. But in 2009, that life took a turn for the worse for her. She lost her job, her husband, and her home. She felt isolated and alone until one day, while watching a documentary on ping pong on PBS, she discovered a whole new world of play within a tight-knit community of eclectic New Yorkers. To a lot of people, table tennis is like a physical chess. It's not just the exercise, although it is the exercise. It's also the mental toughness. When I'm playing ping pong, I get in the zone, and it reminds me of being a kid again. The notion of play is super enjoyable, and for me now, play, I think, is the most underrated four-letter word. I found myself, uh, after the Great Recession, after the death of my husband, trying to figure out what it is I do, what do I like when I'm by myself. So I was out of a job, a widow, living in a new neighborhood, trying to figure out what I was going to do to make money. And I, I almost really didn't know who I was. It was a long marriage, you know, it was uh, almost 40 years. And I saw a documentary on Channel 13 called Ping Pong. It focused on four players from 80 to 100 years old. And they were not playing just for gold medals. They were playing to stay alive, to, to feel life. I thought to myself, there's a sport with a future. It opened a new world to me. I saw that I had some potential. I had been athletic as a kid, and I thought, I could get better at this. I'm going to take lessons. There's nothing I'd rather be doing. This is fun. I got in with a group of people my age, approximately, and we played twice a week. Through them, I started uh, playing more and more, going to tournaments, playing at the Nationals in Las Vegas, and learning how to compete, which for me, as a woman of my generation, uh, no, you win. Go, go ahead, it's okay if you win, you know. <laughs> I had to learn how to embrace winning. The Who, the Pointer Sisters, Jethro Tull, David Bowie. I had the privilege of working in rock and roll when every kid in America wanted to work Honestly, in rock and roll, but it's Alice Cooper. My husband, Ron Delsner, the famous New York City rock promoter, and me, that's what I used to look like. I had started in PR a few years before that because I saw that women were the heads of departments, and I thought, Similar to ping pong, there's a, that's a job with a future. I could become a head of a department. Here I am with Elton John, and uh, he played Carnegie Hall. This was backstage at Carnegie Hall. It keeps slipping. I also had the privilege of working on the 1972 Stones tour, right there, and uh, was one of the people that got the limited edition Stones T-shirt. They only made. 32, I think, and on the back, you can see what it says. So they were personalized, each one. I have been offered $5,000 for it, and I'm not selling. Back in those days, in the early 70s, backstage was a man's world, and my claim to fame and I always told my daughters about it too, is that I could talk my way backstage, even if my name wasn't on the list. And the way I was able to accomplish that was by being focused, strong, and persistent. 
I just didn't take no for an answer. It's been an interesting career and I got to be in that space at the most exciting time. So I try to get to spin four times a week. It's just like the, the temple of table tennis in Manhattan. Uh, right now I'm sitting in the private room at SPIN, which is a place where we sometimes have meetings for the American Youth Table Tennis Organization, which helps kids in public schools in New York. We basically create programs where interested children in a school can meet and play locally, get lessons from a coach who can teach them the proper way of holding the paddle, learn the rules. We get feedback from the schools all the time that it's great for the kids that there are children who, before they took up ping pong, were quiet, uh, lacking self-confidence. I've been told this by, by several principals, table tennis actually helped a number of students get better. I went to the finals this year, and it was pretty impressive. Which finals were they, the middle it school? It was the middle school, and these kids were really good, and there were lots of them, lots of girls. There's, what, more than 50% girls? That's true. And one of the nice things about the sport is that, is that it's, it's, it's one of the better sports for women to play. Hit it here every time. Okay. okay. And then choose what you want to go, backhand okay. or forehand. Okay. Table tennis opened uh, a, an amazing new world to me of a uh, much more fun way of working out a great new uh, array of new friends. It's a welcoming it's sport. A, it's, it is, and it, people it's are very generous. Inclusive, inclusive and democratic. The nicest people. Diverse. Yes. When I came back from the National Senior Games, I resolved that this is it. If not now, when? Time is not infinite. And I went for it. I'm definitely improving. I want to increase my rating. Uh, I'd like to break a thousand, which I think is doable. I, I think if I could get out of my head in competitions that I would be able to. I'm just grateful that I can still play, that I'm still getting better. As long as I can move, I'm doing it. And we'll be following Carol closely as she competes at the Empire State Senior Games this weekend in Cortland, New York.